and the Customs and Border Protection agents stopping cars along the border and asking if you're a citizen, but not stopping trucks and looking inside the trucks to see if they're carrying nuclear, biological, chemical weapons or, or other weapons cash or uniforms to the Chinese army that General Flynn has said, we have at least seven divisions of military age Chinese in this country right now. Without doing the work that we need to be doing, we are just allowing ourselves to be lambs to the slaughter, but the people have to recognize that cavalry isn't coming. We have a woke military leadership. The Customs and Border Protection agents are just doing their job. They're following unlawful orders. We, the people, have to stand up and go, guess what? Our government is not up by and for us, Clayton. We need to stand up. It's not about shooting our government. It's about defending our country and our family and our God-given rights. And people need to recognize that, and they need to act accordingly. It's called civic duty. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. March 8th, 2024, let's get into it. So first thing I wanted to talk about was the invasion that's taking place in the United States. And you know, I viewed it as just an open border. I knew that we had a lot of terrorist groups that had come across. A lot of uh, the drug cartels are here now. A lot of criminals from other nations and everything. But I did not know, I did not know that the Chinese army has been led into the United States and brought in by the NGOs. George Soros, uh, your taxpayer dollars, uh, Mayorkas, that traitor, uh, they, they facilitated this whole thing. And they're here in the thousands. Why would thousands of Chinese soldiers be in the United States? Hmm, I wonder. I think it's just a matter of time until this whole thing gets activated and then this whole country is going to be on fire and I'm not sure where they're heading with that other than if they wanted I guess you could call they're bringing the war to the United States is the way that I see it let's watch a clip uh, from redacted so you can see what I'm talking about well the crisis at the U.S. southern border continues the disaster is unfolding right before our eyes but it seems like independent journalists are shining a light in dark places it could resulting could be resulting in some major shifts right now among the deep state players in all of this so all of this is facilitated all of this is being orchestrated to bring illegal immigrants into the united states to undermine the united states and it's being done with the help of the U.S. government being funded and supported by the U.S. government. Uh, two great journalists who, of course, have been exposing what's been going on at Darien Gap and Vander Steel, Michael Yan, join us now with some really big news on one of the camps and one of the locations down in the Darien Gap. You guys have been shining a light on this, getting international attention to these camps, and we've been featuring it here on the show because of your reporting, and suddenly now there's a mysterious fire and documents are going missing, and government's panicking, we think. Can you guys break this down? What exactly has been happening in Panama that our audience needs to know about? Go ahead, Ann. Uh, so, Clayton, very simply, uh, Michael Yan has been leading an expedition down the Daring Gap for several years now. He focused in on it right after the election. But more recently, I've been joining him. As a matter of fact, we joined together during Operation Burning Edge. We kicked it off, and we were on your show uh, when we were stumbling across new information with respect to missing children out of the NGOs that we were focusing in on in Texas. Well, that's taken us back to Darien because the majority of the state sponsors of terror are moving these, quote, migrants, and they're not, it's an invasion army, through the Darien Gap, up through Central America. This is funded by the American taxpayer through the United Nations Immigration uh, organization, non-governmental organization of choice known as IOM, the International Organization for Migration, as well as other NGOs like HIAS, Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. We focused closely in on HIAS when we visited one camp called San Vicente, China call, uh, Michael calls it China Camp. A lot of Chinese uh, immigrants, if you will, migrants or Invasion, uh, invasion army come through there, and they're mostly men of military age. You can speak to the people down there. They will tell you that's what they see. That's what we saw. Uh, after going down there with Epoch Times, Laura Loomer, myself, Mara Macy, who's running for Congress, probably one of the only honest brokers of a congressional opportunity uh, who's willing to report on this, we all witnessed it, saw some very suspicious people. One week later, Hyas locked their Twitter account. They took their sign down that was outside San Vicente camp. And then the camp mysteriously was torched, specifically the offices that have the immigration records of who have processed through that camp on their way to the United States, in addition to the 
agents, the immigration agents, and in addition to the center front agents. So everything was wiped out, which is very, very suspicious considering this was less than a week after us being there. That was just last Friday, the fire, yeah. by the way. The camp itself wasn't completely burned down. They targeted those records. And Centerfront actually announced, what's today? Yeah, they announced yesterday that they're doing a special investigation because they see that they believe Centerfront basically is the Panamanian sort of border police slash almost like an army, but it's not actually an army. And they're very professional, super fit, very, I deal with them all the time. And three of them were badly hurt, by the way, in this riot. It looks like what happened was there was agent provocateurs kicked off this big riot. Uh, 45 people, about 250 people apparently were involved. 45 were arrested or are being deported now. And uh, But they specifically targeted those records. So most of the camp was not touched at all. Wasn't that interesting? So I encourage you to go to Redacted uh, yesterday's episode and watch the whole thing because it was the most disturbing thing about what's happening with the border crisis. You know, the things I can't figure out is how did the Democrats capture all levers of power to facilitate this whole thing? How can you get so many traitors to do what they're doing? You know, especially at the Pentagon. I would have thought that there would be people at the Pentagon that wouldn't go along with this. But in fact, from what I understand, a lot of these Chinese soldiers are being housed on our military bases around the United States. It's clear, I mean, we've been very clear, this is a terror camp. I mean, this is the most in intense terrorist camp you've ever seen. It's a float, it's more like a bus station, right? So even the United States government or the United Nations, what are they, World Economic Forum, Chinese Communist Party, uh, it, it, let's say the US government, they have a vested interest in destroying those records or capturing those records because they don't want to see that Americans have flowed, flowed through there. Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas was at that camp on April 18th, 2022. I was physically present. I waited for four days. And he landed in four Blackhawks and he was in the camp bringing 18 million more dollars to the camp that time to expand it. So he's physically been, been there. They published their own photos from their public affairs Department of Homeland Security. And then, of course, I've published uh, images and video from that day as well. So. That's one motivated partner, the United States, getting rid of the records so that, you know, when they start shooting up synagogues and golf courses down here in Florida, that people aren't saying, hey, and others would, of course, be the Chinese Communist Party. So, so the who idea is who, who, who we want to cover our path. Yeah. We want to cover our path here. We want to, these terrorists yeah, are in the United or, States, the, the tens of thousands of terrorists that are in the United States now, and we taxpayers have been paying for it, so we want to destroy the paper trail. Is that the case, Anne? So that means this, that the whole military has been infiltrated, you know, with traitors to the United States. And uh, I, I wonder how many soldiers that they've brought in now, the new woke warriors that are going to join the Chinese and fight in the, the, the people of the United States. Yeah, absolutely. And let's be really clear. When Michael and I were uh, in a car last week driving in towards Tennessee, we were we received a phone call from somebody inside the military who uh, understand who is a flight surgeon who understands and explains very clearly that the immigrants I'm going to use air quotes because they're not immigrants okay these invaders coming across our border are separated they're set the military is setting up what's called MEPS stations along the border at border checkpoints border security where customs and border protection have already temporary facilities for processing. One migrant, immigrant, invader will be sent in one direction and another will be sent towards a MEPS facility for the military. Why are they doing this? They're already selecting immigrants, migrants, invaders to be processed for a pathway to citizenship inside our military. Not too dissimilar to what they're doing in California and Chicago and other cities where they're saying, hey, join us on law enforcement and we'll give you a pathway to citizenship, a gun, a badge, a job and a card so that you can legally earn money. Now you have invaders, an army with guns, just like President Obama wanted to have. He wanted to have his own private army. They are importing it. The United Nations is collaborating. Again, we are the biggest funders of the UN through their NGO partners and importing these people from state sponsors of terror. And then you have a camp, which is a known camp where multiple Chinese of military aged men are being processed, mysteriously have a fire. Now you have to also factor in that these uh, illegal invaders are also getting debit cards for 2200 bucks a month from, again, the U.S. taxpayer. That being said, 
We know we're going into another banking collapse. It's going to be another cascading event of regional bank failures because the Fed is cutting off the spigot on Monday the 11th. When that happens, you have to ask yourself, how much longer will these, these invaders be allowed to have their EBT cards refilled every month? When you're cut off from your bank uh, and, and we're cut off from our bank, what do you think is going to happen to the illegals when they're cut off from their funds and you can't put food on the table? This is the this is the table that is being set for a full blown civil war in this country that is going to get very, very bloody. And again, it's all being funded by the taxpayer who is blindly walking themselves to the gallows by allowing the federal government to fund the United Nations. So what I wanted to say was if you're not in a militia already, be sure and join one. Now, you say, oh, no, militia, you know, you're thinking of right-wing gun-toting, you know, people running around the woods and camouflage. No, a well-organized militia is people banding together to defend themselves. Yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is a lot of the people that would be coming through the dairy now are actually flying in from Colombia or they're flying in from Guatemala or they're coming across the Canadian border. There was just a big run of people that came in here to Florida. They came up on, what was that, Jupiter? Uh, uh, Jupiter Beach, yeah. Jupiter Beach, uh, they're constantly doing that, right. But they're also expanding their existing camps like we witnessed down in uh, in the dairy in Baja Chiquito. They're expanding Baja Chiquito camp, Lajas Blancas. And what you need, if you, uh, if you join a militia or you form your own, is you need to come up with a plan of action to protect your neighborhood. And when I say neighborhood, I mean, I think there's going to be fighting on the streets. In the, and if you're in a rural area, I think that's where they're going to go first. Because they know that's where the guns are. So they're going to want to take out the rural areas first. I'm sure the cities will be on fire, too. So I'm just saying, you know, you need, we need to organize in some fashion. Doing your job. What happened? I, where, where are the men? Where are the people that are going to get down there and stop this? You know, where? <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking have, at two right here. I'm I know. Two right here. I, I mean, uh, yeah. you, you, know, you know, we need these men. We need these men who you know, drive these pickup trucks who care about their country. These American patriots to say enough is enough. Get down here. We saw you know trucker convoy to get down there, and that sort of I don't know what's going on with that. But we need people. If the federal government won't do it, this is an invasion. We are watching the country collapse right in front of our eyes. That's it, Clayton, you hit the nail on the head and thank you for bringing that segue up because there are groups, there are lots of freedom groups out there that are asking these questions and they're organizing. We just were in Tennessee, we spoke to some there. I speak to these people all over the country. And before people freak out when I use the word militia, it's in the second amendment, it's part of our constitution. Militia is not the word that the FBI would have you mischaracterized with a bunch of men, tactical gear and face paint, running around shooting ARs off in the middle of the night. That's not a militia. A well-regulated militia is an organized group of private, of citizens that are saying, hey, I'm defending my home, my state, or my county, and my country. And right now, we need to call on the militia and get the militia organized. And there's organizations out there like tacticalcivics.com that are constitutionally Christian-based groups that have over 1,600 counties covered in our country already. They need another 1,500, and we're off to the races. We have every county covered in this country where people are going to be trained on what it means to defend your homestead, defend your, your city, your county, etc. This is critical that we're at that point because guess what? Every state is a border state, and they have infiltrated, thanks to governors like Governor Greg Abbott, a WEF puppet who has seven pages on the WEF site de dedicated to him, the World Economic Forum. They've bust these illegal invasion army all throughout our country. And by doing the bidding of the World Economic Forum and you know bringing this army inside everywhere. Now, I, I joined our country, our choice, but that's, I don't know. I, I'm still on the fence about that. I, I thought they were gonna drop my book so that I could help you out in one way, shape or fashion. And uh, if you stay for later in this video, I'm gonna do a reading from the book to help you with your cybersecurity. Because uh, I am that cybersecurity guy, <laughs> you know, so, so I can't just talk about geopolitics on everything. And uh, we'll get into that. That'll be the second half of, of this video. But uh, anyway, I'm just telling you to at least, you know, get, get yourselves organized. You know, form a community watch. Uh, make sure that, and then, you know, find the people with guns and you have a plan of action. You know, where's your defensive perimeter? Where are your lines of defense? You know, should you be digging trenches? I mean, if I was out in the country, I'd be digging a daggone trench, you know, trench warfare. You know, because you know the drones are going to be flying. We've been using those in uh, Ukraine. So this thing's going to get nasty. 
and it's going to get nasty. I'm sure that I probably won't survive it being a crippled old man. <laughs> but, uh, the other thing, you know, is if you don't want to uh, defend America, then do something for charity. Okay, I was going to show you today that the St. John's Water Authority here in Florida put in a bench for me to sit and read a book. And in fact, I was going to do that today, but you can't smell it, but they're doing a controlled burn. So I actually had to turn around on the hike because uh, the smell of the smoke is pretty pretty intense so uh, but the thing was I got them to put in that bench and then now I'm buying a picnic table for the community and we're gonna put a picnic table here in the park so how do you want to give to charity I prefer to help my community in whatever way shape or fashion you know just going to church and dropping two bucks in the in the kitty you know you don't know what that uh, preachers doing with the money hopefully he's spending it but, you know, a lot of churches I see, the preacher lives right there in a house <laughs> that those contributions pay the utilities on. You know, so that's not where I want my money going. I want it going directly to the community. If you don't have any money to buy, like, a picnic table, like I'm going to do, to give to your community, then just do some community work. Go out and pick up some doggone garbage along the road somewhere. Just pick a spot. Say, you know what, I'm going to, this is going to be my, my road to pick up garbage on. Or do what I do, you know, because I'm a big hiker, I come in and I work on these trails. And uh, in fact, I was gonna bring a saw today, but I was just too doggone tired. I've been working in the rocket around my house. But you know, go out and, you know, blaze a trail, you know, cut, cut, you know, where the, where the trail is. You know, if a tree falls down across the trail, maybe bring a chainsaw, cut that so that people can hike that trail. You, you know, I'm just telling you, you, you pick what, have, whatever you wanna do. You know, if you've got a children's playground, maybe buy some children a swing set for the playground. Work with the city and uh, put your own swing set in there and put a little plaque on it saying, donated by thus and such. Peace out and stay free. And the UN backs me up. I mean, we have to turn this whole thing around on them, Clayton, and start using their words against them because we've allowed them to bully us into the point where we have submitted to an invasion of our country and we have to just say no. Well, Michael, I might know what they're going to submit. Yeah, I do not submit. I do not comply. I mean,